Good Friday afternoon from the farm. We welcome you to Laird Q. Kagan Stadium for Stanford Women's Soccer as today the Cardinal host the Utah Utes. Great to have you with us. I'm Troy Clarity and Stanford in an unusual season in an unusual position. One and two on the season and tied for ninth in the Pac-12 so far with a couple of losses last week to the Oregon schools. Started with the loss on Thursday at Oregon, the first time the Ducks have beaten the Cardinal ever in the Ducks program history. That was a conference match. The game a couple days later at Oregon State was not a conference match, but the Beavers still got the 2-1 win over the Stanford Cardinal. So the Cardinal with back-to-back -back losses for the first time since 2013. Can they be sharper and can they have better mo motivate can they have a better motion and can they do better off the ball those are the things that Paul Ratcliffe wants to see when the Cardinal face the Utah Utes and Utah also looking to get back into the win column as they had a couple of games against Pullman or up in Pullman I should say up at Washington State only one of those in conference play and for Utes that one was a tie scoreless tie against the 15th ranked Cougs last week and then Washington State turned around and got the 2-0 win over Utah to close out the back-to-back -back doubleheader against the Utah Utes. So overall, the Utes won 2-2 two two on the season. But with that one tie, currently they're tied for fifth in Pac-12 play. So both of these teams looking to get back and get in the win column the first time in Pac-12 play. Let's get you the starting 11 for both teams. Beginning with the Utah Utes in goal is S.J. Edwards across the back. It'll be Brianna Pearson, Kaylee Coatney, Reagan Fuller, and Haley Farrar. In the midfield, you'll see Hannah Olson, Kylie Geis, Courtney Talbot, and Aaron Bridges. And up front, you'll see Taliana Kafusi and, and Eden Jacobson as well. Eden Jacobson, you'll actually see her in the midfield. Interesting stories about her. She's a fifth-year senior, has been in the program for quite a long time. We'll tell you more about that as we go along. For the Stanford Cardinal, their starting 11 features Katie Meyer in goal. Across the back, you'll see Kiki Pickett Ma at Madison Eisen, as well as uh, Sarah Paulson as well. And Across the midfield, you have Maya Doms, who will get her second start uh, of the season. Amy Sayre in the midfield as well. And up front, it's Savannah Coleman and Madison Haley. Bell Breed also in the midfield, along with Sierra Engie. So Sarah Paulson also getting the start as well. So that rounds out your starting 11 for both squads. On a beautiful day here at Stanford, 66 degrees. Sunny now might get cloudy as the afternoon progresses with a bit of a chill a bit of a march chill in the air weird to be here watching soccer in this building during this time of year but we are certainly glad that you are on board with us cardinal one and two utes at one two and two paul ratcliffe Leading the Stanford Cardinal as their head coach, the Utah Utes led by Rich Manning, a couple of the best in the business. Rich Manning in his 17th year leading Utah. Paul Ratcliffe also in his 17th year leading the Cardinal. Madison Haley and Maya Doms over the ball, waiting for the official signal. And away we go for a moment. But first, a moment to take a knee. And off we go. Cardinal Utes, enjoy the match. 
here at Laird Q. Kagan Stadium. Stanford 10-1-1 all time against the Utah Utes. Utes' lone win came in 2006. That game was played at Santa Clara. So the Utes have yet to win here in this building, and Utah hasn't scored on Stanford in over five years. you got to go back to September 24th, 2015. Katie Rogers putting one in the back of the net against the Cardinal. Maya Doms, good to see her back in the mix for Stanford. The sophomore from Davis will likely be one of the main engine parts in the midfield this year. She's getting back up to speed. She did not participate in the match, the opener against Pepperdine, which to this point is Stanford's only win this season. And that didn't come easily as the Cardinal had to score twice in the final eight minutes of the match to come back to beat Pepperdine 2-1. to one. An arcing ball from the top of the penalty box from Sierra Engi. And then Savannah Coleman converting a penalty kick to give the Cardinal the win. Eden Jacobson in the mix for Utah, but that ball falls off of Hannah Olsen's foot along the far side. Utah still maintains possession. But since that opening win over Pepperdine, which, talking to Paul Radcliffe, he said, yes, we got the win, but no one was, was satisfied or happy with how it came about. The back-to-back -back losses last week for the Cardinal at the Oregon schools. Ahead to Catherine Paulson. The nutmeg. Down the touchline. Sends it through, and a score! Wonderfully done, set up by Catherine Paulson. Beat the defender, streaked down the touchline, centered it, found the teammate, and got the score. And very early on, the Cardinal take a 1-0 lead. Well, that did not take long at all. But it all started with a terrific move by Catherine Paulson, who was able to beat the defender on the touchline, the nutmeg, as a matter of fact. And she centered it to Savannah Coleman. Coleman now with her second goal of the year, but Catherine Paulson with a terrific assist. There's Katie Meyer with the ball at her foot for a moment before she distributes. Kiki Pickett. That one sent out of bounds off of Utah. Cardinal to throw it in. Pickett, the veteran, the senior from Santa Barbara. The draft pick. And she was taken number four overall by Kansas City in the NWSL draft back in January. Madison Haley taken seven overall by Chicago. Haley had it for a moment, couldn't connect with Katherine Paulson. But an outstanding start to that sequence that led to the Cardinals' goal by Katherine Paulson, whose twin sister Sarah is on the team and is on the field, helping to handle things along the back line for the Cardinal. They're both from Los Altos, California. Hemmed in, far side, Stanford ball. The hard touch ends up with Utah. Olsen along the far side. Taken away by Coleman. Sets up Haley. The left foot, the center, no one quite there. That was Sarah Paulson who tried to get it going. Watch what happens when Madison Haley had the ball. Number three in white playing for the Cardinal. She's She's hard to miss because she's such a presence on the field. Pepperdine had her, it seemed, at least double marked throughout the entirety of the match. Haley did not start in the match. They're bringing her along as she was injured a little bit in the preseason, the ramp up to this spring season. But when Haley came in, Pepperdine made sure to have at least 
two bodies on her. And it was a very physical, physical afternoon for her. But it was Haley who drew the penalty that led to Savannah Coleman's penalty kick goal that gave the Cardinal the win. And as many whistles as maybe Haley should have drawn, she got the one that mattered the most. Angie playing across the back. Of course, the Cardinal without the services of Naomi Germa. Germa tore an ACL last fall. And certainly a, certainly a blow for Stanford this year, a team that was already missing Sophia Smith. And of course, Katarina Macario, Sam Hyatt as well. So the Cardinal a lot younger in some key positions, especially, particularly across the back without Germa there. Madison Eisen there defensively, but Katie Meyer comes up and collects it at the top of the 18. Whistle away from the ball. And Kylie Geis is being directed off the field for a moment. Not sure if it's an equipment issue or, or something else. But Geis with the Utah trainer heading over to the, to the table to see what assistance he can be. In the meantime, Back to action we go. Meyer sends it to the far side. And Geist looks like she's ready to go back in the next opportunity. Out of bounds, heads up over on the far side as Geis re-enters. Throw and coming from Courtney Talbot. Chipped out, Stanford ball. Coleman working defensively. Utah started its season by dropping a 5-1 decision against BYU. BYU, the 10th ranked team in the country at the time, beat Dixie State 2-1, tied against Weber State, and then had the results against 15th ranked Pullman last week, the tie in the conference match and the loss in the non-conference game. Outside, Pickett, this is what she can do. Centered, penalty spot, overshoots perhaps Doms. Coleman there too. But that one just a bit overshot from Pickett. Stanford ranked number 23 in this week's coaches poll, so this is already the third ranked opponent that Utah has faced in the early going. And they'll face a fourth on Sunday when they head over to Berkeley to face the 10th ranked Golden Bears. Out of bounds. Off of Taliana Kafusi, a freshman from Salt Lake City. Kafusi's cousin, Tangaloa, an outside linebacker for Stanford football. Too much. Catherine Paulson can't catch up. So some family ties between Utah women's soccer and Stanford football. I believe Stanford will face Utah in the upcoming Pac-12 football schedule, which was released a few days ago. I believe that's actually a Friday night game as well. Here at Stanford, if memory serves me correctly. Sent towards Coleman, the poke, Haley closing, but Kaylee Coatney able to send it away. Utes trying to 
build an attack. Haven't been able to find their forwards to this point. Kalfusi and Aaron Bridges also getting the start up front for the Utes. And the Cardinal win that ball. Michaela Christensen normally starts among or alongside Kafusi up front for the Utes. SJ Edwards calls for it, but instead intercepted. Catherine Paulson, dogged pursuit, trying to save it, but she touched it last, and Utah will throw it in. Well, a couple of hustle plays already for Catherine Paulson. The first leading to the only goal to this point in this match. That came in the third minute as Paulson with a sublime assist to Savannah Coleman. So Catherine Paulson off to a good start in this match. Play back to Eisen. Eisen, the sophomore from Rockland, Kiki Pickett. Back to Eisen with Kafusi in pursuit. Finally claimed by Amy Sayer, freshman from Sydney, Australia. Dom shows for it. In traffic, gets some space, has Coleman outside, slides it in that direction towards the corner. Coleman catches up with it, hangs on to it. Tried the similar play that Catherine Paulson had early in this game, but not the same result. And that one bounces off of Sayers' foot, collected by S.J. Edwards. The redshirt junior from Albany, Oregon, was Pac-12 All-Academic in the 2019 season. Played just one game in 2019, but it was against Stanford. Six minutes and got a save. Haley, Coleman, or check that breed. Played back. In the 18, center towards Coleman, trying to find it and can't hang on. Poked away last moment by the Utes defense. Coatney in the area to make the defensive play. As Coleman tried to find a little space, get away from the defense, but the touch, not there. Back to Engie. Engie, who got the first goal against Pepperdine. Witnessed in person by her sister, Skyler, a member of the Pepperdine women's soccer team. Pickett looking for room. Back to Eisen. And play back to Katie Meyer, the redshirt sophomore from Newbury Park, California. Paul Ratcliffe says that the lineup might look a little different on Sunday than it does today with matches in quick succession. Colorado Buffaloes coming to town here at Kagan. That game will be on the Pac-12 Network. Looking forward to being on the call and being with you again for that one. Too hard off of the foot of Haley Farrar. Dom's turns, finds Pickett and gets it back. Ferrari and Hale trying to find it. Coleman, a nice job of shielding. Sarah Paulson shields it off and lets Ison get it out of harm's way. Utah to throw it in. On the ground. Trying to turn. Catherine Paulson there again, but Utah throwing it in. Reagan Fuller, a freshman. Overall, a young back line for the Utes with Coatney and Fuller, freshman. Brianna Pearson, a redshirt sophomore. And Haley Farrar, the veteran of the starting back line. She's a redshirt junior. Okay, 
Utes with four goals this year. None in their last two plus matches. Gets by Pickett. Gets it back. And Pickett recovers well. Gets help from Eisen to clean it up. Bridges slides it forward. Off of Pickett. And the first corner kick of the match coming up. Bridges getting the start today. She started both matches up at Washington State last week. So she's found her way into the starting 11. Aaron Bridges' parents, Mike and Wendy, both Utah grads. So Aaron keeping it going. First corner of the match. Right foot, front post. In traffic off of Haley Foot for a moment, trying to find it, and Meyer able to make the collection. That ball trickled, touched a couple of players. No one could get a clean shot off. I believe Kaylee Coatney was in the mix and may have had the best look at things. But that would have been tough to, to pull off. Just over 15 minutes in. Stanford leading Utah 1-0. Troy Clarity, glad you're with us. Savannah Coleman in the third minute. With her second goal of the year. Coleman on the Mac Herman trophy watch list. Of course, she missed all of the 2019 season, was injured during the preseason and unable to go, which Paul Ratcliffe said was was certainly a blow as Savannah was poised to perhaps be Stanford's best striker on the squad in 2019. Meyer clears it, sending it down towards Haley, bumped it back and gets the whistle. Well, you get the feeling that it's going to be that kind of life and that kind of season for Madison Haley this year. And that's really the first time that, that Utah has kind of bodied her a little bit, which is tough to do. But Haley, as complete a player as she is, and it's been terrific to watch her progression over the years, she's certainly going to take her share of bumps and bruises. You would think, anyway. If I'm an opposing coach, that's certainly a, an approach I would take. Sayer, ahead to Haley. Ison calls for it. Not enough on it. Taken by Farrar. Out of bounds. Utah ball. To Eden Jacobson in the center. Jacobson, a fifth-year senior from Salt Lake City, but she's been in the Utah program since 2015. In a lot of ways, that seems like a long time ago. As Engi with the clear, down towards Doms. Jacobson went on a mission for a year, also redshirted for a separate season. And her dad, Eric, captain of Utah football, played in the mid-80s. Haley. I haven't caught between two thoughts there for a moment with Pickett overlapping for a second. Pickett way forward and on the opposite side of the field. But that's, that's what she can do. She can get vol involved in the attack. Has been magnificent in that respect throughout her career. And quickly established herself as a fan favorite right from jump. Colorado head coach Danny Sanchez says that Kiki Pickett is the most dynamic outside back in college soccer. No arguments from me. The throw into the box. And a corner kick for the Cardinal. First set piece coming up for Stanford. Sharpness in set pieces is certainly something that's going to watch, be watched. Of course, given Stanford's limitations with Santa Clara County's restrictions and the health guidelines here, Cardinal with not a whole lot of ramp-up time to get to the season. Right foot, penalty spot, Coleman crashing in, but it's sent the other way. 
Cardinal wanted a handball. Do they get it? Doesn't appear so. Ball may have glanced off of Utah, likely inadvertently. Jacobson can't get there. Meyer the clear towards Pickett. Out of bounds, Stanford ball. Cardinal unable to get together as a full team until early February. And it also didn't help that the first two games on their schedule were canceled. Supposed to face Santa Clara on February the 14th. And then host the University of San Francisco on February 17th. But neither of those games were officially played. Santa Clara reports were that they got back to training even later than Stanford did, so they just weren't, weren't competitively ready. And the positive COVID-19 test within the USF program run towards the penalty spot, but Escobedo held up right around the lip of the 18. Final minute, first half. Towards Watanabe. Off of Christensen. Cardinal in little hurry. Final seconds of the first half tick off. And we have reached halftime at Kagan Stadium. Savannah Coleman off of a gorgeous assist from Katherine Paulson in the third minute and Maya Doms in the 31st minute finishing off a rebound off a spilled shot from Utah keeper S.J. Edwards. Those are the two goals scored so far in this one as the Cardinal lead the Utah Utes 2-0. We'll return to Kagan Stadium with two minutes left on the halftime clock. Troy Clardy here, glad you're with us on GoStanford.com and Pac-12 Plus. Great to have you with us on the farm as we are moments away from the start of the second half. Stanford women's soccer with a 2-0 lead over the Utah Utes. Troy Clarity, happy that you are with us. A couple of other scores around the Pac-12 from action today. One final in the books, USC beating Oregon State 2-0. So USC getting its first conference win of the year as they were sharing the bottom spot along with Stanford and Arizona and Oregon State entering today's action. Colorado with a 1-0 lead over 10th ranked California. That game at the half over in Berkeley. A couple other games coming up later on today. Washington at Arizona. That's a 5 p.m. start. This one should be a very intriguing one between two ranked teams. Third ranked UCLA hosting 20th ranked Oregon. That game kicks off at 5.30 down in Westwood. Washington State, the 25th ranked Cougars, unfortunately with some COVID issues. Both of their games this weekend down in the Grand Canyon State canceled. They were supposed to play the Sun Devils this evening, but that game will not take place. Meanwhile, Stanford and Utah with the Cardinal ahead 2-0 looking for its first Pac-12 win of the season. And Stanford didn't take long to get on the board. Savannah Coleman off of a gorgeous play by Catherine Paulson, who nutmegged the defender along the touchline and then sent it forward, the spinner, the center, into the six. And then Savannah Coleman with the finish. That just, it, it just 2.04 into the game. So Stanford with a 1-0 lead in the third minute of the match. And the Cardinals struck again. Maya Doms off of a rebound from Utah keeper S.J. Edwards. That in the 31st minute and accounting for the Cardinals' 2-0 lead. The goals by Doms and Coleman, the assist by Paulson. Two saves so far for Cardinal keeper Katie Meyer. One save to this point for Utah keeper S.J. Edwards. And Paul Ratcliffe coming into this week wanted to see crisper passing 
sharper movement, especially off the ball for the Cardinal this week. And even though at times the passing may be still quite not there with players moving from in opposite directions from where, where the ball seems to be going, maybe the kinks still being worked out for the most part there as, let's face it, Stanford didn't have much of a ramp up to the season, but even though certainly not a completely crisp game played by Stanford in, in those respects, in a lot of ways, much better for Stanford as they have looked quite cohesive. They have been able to hang on to the ball and keep it and build for much of the match to this point and really limiting Utah's opportunities. The Utes do lead in corner kicks 3-1 to one against Stanford, but not much has come of those corners. A couple of them Katie Meyer claiming them out of the air and snuffing them out before they could really get going. So Stanford doing well holding the ball, doing better in linking passes than the Utes have to this point. It's been very, very quiet for Utah's attackers, most notably Taliana Kafusi, the freshman, and Aaron Bridges, who got the start for the Utes today. Utes to get us going here in the second half. As Cardinal lead the Utes 2-0. But that's only the half of it. As off we go in the second half. Eaton Jacobson had it for a moment. And now Catherine Paulson off and running. Haley trying to lay it out towards Coleman. And again... There have been those moments where perhaps the, the chemistry, not quite 100% there just yet. The chemistry that is developed so often in training during the preseason. During the spring season, the regular spring season. But Stanford not spending this spring training. They're spending it competing. Jacobson. And sent forward off the foot of Reagan Fuller. Ali Shinko from Germany. Down the near sideline. And into the corner. Doesn't have enough on the center. Shinko looks like she'll be shifted to a higher position here once the opportunity presents itself. Of course, no fans here at Kagan Stadium with the regulations being what they are here in Santa Clara County and statewide. So it gives us a chance to eavesdrop a little more on some of the potential communications coming in from the benches even though they're on the opposite side of us here at Kagan. Tom swoops in. And Coleman had it for a moment, tried to get it back to Sayer, but instead it was Jacobson who got in the way. Utes trying to build. Coleman a step ahead. Kafusi. Tried to get it towards Brooklyn James, but it was Sarah Paulson who was able to get there first. Not Kafusi might have tried to take that one towards the goal mouth instead. Geis and Meyer on a hop. Sent towards Catherine Paulson. Both the Paulson twins are on the field right now. Bounces off of Kennedy Carter, a freshman from Mission Viejo, who's in the match. Overshoots Kafusi. Pickett, far side, aiming for Haley. Sent forward by Coatney. Coatney broke into the Utah starting lineup against 
Washington State. Started both of those games up in Pullman. And for the most part, is seemed to do well, for the most part, for the Utes in this one. So the freshman making a bit of a statement to this point. Breed with space and time and options. Chooses Doms. Waiting to pick it. Back to Doms. Good ball to Doms. But shielded off. Cotney, I believe, again. Utah to throw it in. So Colorado with a 1-0 lead over Cal. As that game has gone to the second half over in Berkeley. Of course, the Buffs will be here in this building on Sunday. Towards Paulson, shot, score! Gorgeously set up from Madison Haley. But no, the flag on the far side, and Paulson is called offside. So take that one off the board. Remains 2-0. Well, for what it's worth, gorgeous ball from Madison Haley. James on a sprint trying to get there. Sayer beats her to it. Corner kick for Utah. And it's part of the process for Haley becoming a more complete player. As we've seen that process take place from day one in her Cardinal career. Heck of a pass, unfortunately. It will never go as a goal. Or, lead, or go as an assist, rather. Fourth corner kick of the match for Utah. Spinning and Meyer able to get up and beat Kafusi to the ball once more. Kafusi, a nice target in the air. Five foot 11. And Meyer sends a moonshot with Haley trying to win it. The header with Edwards coming off her line, able to clear it away. Doms to Sayer. Catherine Paulson offside again. So once again, Paulson a step beyond. Always going to be a step ahead, but maybe not a step beyond. No whistle. Doesn't make Stanford very happy. Pickett breaks it up. Cardinal try to build once more. Haley the chip, Sayer waits. Back to Sarah Paulson, Breed. Has pick it outside, gets it there. Chip towards the corner, Coleman at top speed. That might have been off the linesman on the far side, Utah to throw it in. James in traffic, takes a bit of a spill. Sayer there defensively for the Cardinal. Aiming for Kafusi. 
Catherine to Sarah. Paulson, that is. Catherine and Sarah, as mentioned, the twins from Los Altos, they, holded a, they hosted a TEDx talk together on finding your true identity. I'm sure they have expert experience in that department. Looking for Haley. And the whistle. The bump from behind from Reagan Fuller. Fuller, a freshman from American Fork, Utah, won a state championship twice during her high school days there and was the Utah Valley Player of the Year as a senior. But that contact warranted the whistle. Set piece for the Cardinal. Sayer standing over it. Sarah Paulson not far behind. I believe Catherine Paulson is also short. Paulson bending wide. Coleman tries to hang on to it in traffic along the back line. And Utah eventually clears it out. And Pickett sends it out of the park onto the practice fields. That free kick probably aiming towards the, the back post, but the accuracy not quite there. Pick it again. But Utah to throw it in. Utes were picked 10th in the Pac-12 preseason poll. Lost 14 letter winners from the 2019 season. A campaign in which they lost at Duke in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Finished eighth in the conference, but still made the NCAAs. It was their first NCAA appearance since 2016. They won 13 matches that year and advanced to the third round before losing to USC. Cardinal building with the Paulson twins. Haley turns. Showing for it, but it skips off a Ute defender's foot. Here comes Utah. Engie defensively, a shot spills off of Meyer, but she's able to get it back. But may have been along the back line. Corner kick coming up for the Utes. That was a, that was a good idea for, for Utah. And for a second, I thought that might have had a chance of going in. Kylie Geis didn't miss a minute of both games for the Utes and Pullman last week. The sophomore from Boise. The right foot towards the penalty spot. And that is headed out of harm's way. Maya Doms makes sure. But the Utes have been a, a dangerous squad since joining the, the Pac-12. We mentioned their recent NCAA tournament appearances. Rich Manning. In his 17th year, leading the Utes, previously an assistant at Santa Clara during the late 90s. Santa Clara, of course, a program that, that knows what it's doing. It's had so many fantastic players come through that program. And Manning a, Manning a good dude overall, too. Off of Kafusi's foot, Shinko. Back to Kafusi. Looking for some space. Finds Jacobson. Jacobson versus Pickett. Pickett doesn't make it easy. Never does. And now Haley with Pickett. And played back to Edwards. Off 
Havchinko's foot, but sent forward. Carter on the run. Going to ground. Jacobson has it. And Pickett able to set it out of bounds. So the Utes and NCAA tournament team in the 2019 season, but a bit younger this year. Meyer able to get it away and keep it away with Kennedy Carter closing in. Not easy to do to go up and get it when you've got, a, got an attacker closing in. Left foot towards Haley. Shove from the back, dispossessed. And Kafusi may not have been ready for it. Haley with a little room. Sending it towards Catherine Paulson. 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 Waiting, biting time, loses it. And Kennedy Carter finally wins the battle before the ball goes off of Bree's foot. Boy, Paulson dogged, just hanging in there and trying to, trying to make play out of it somehow. But Carter able to get it done defensively. 60 minutes in, 2-0, Stanford with the lead over the Utah Utes. Troy Clarity here, glad that you're with us. Substitutions for the Cardinal with Sayer and Coleman coming off. Samantha Williams and Astrid Wheeler returning to the game. Bradley Avery also back in the match for the Utes. Pickett towards Breed, falls to Haley. Haley blocked by Edwards. Boy, I thought, I thought Dom's had a real shot of, of getting ahead on it in the traffic as well, but eventually fell to Haley's foot. Edwards able to make the stop. Now she gets it away. Might have been offside as well. Bridges back in the match as well, coming in for Kafusi. Williams back to Pickett. Doms swoops in. Doms. The left foot deflected, altered by Utah. I believe that was Bradley Avery who got a piece of it and prevented the clean shot. Astrid Wheeler in the mix. And that'll go in Utah's direction. Wheeler, the freshman from Atlanta, the top drawer of soccer's number one recruit for 2020, four-time high school All-American. Utah called for the switch, tried to pull it off. Wheeler's there instead, has three options, chooses Williams, Edwards off for a line, Williams with the beat, can't get off the shot, but gets the penalty. Edwards coming way off of her line, but Cardinal with plenty of options, chose Williams, and Williams, Eluded the first defender, 
tried to go towards goal, but was brought down from behind. And instead of a penalty, this one is going to be spotted just outside the 18. Cardinal not thrilled with that development for clear reasons. So the ball spotted about 18 and a half yards away. It appeared that the contact, the, the, the foul happened inside the box from, from my recollection. We unfortunately don't have the, the benefit of replay, but just in my, in my mind's eye, that should be going towards the spot. As it is, Stanford with still with an opportunity here. And boy, this used to be Katarina Macario's specialty. With the ball just outside the 18. How many goals does she score from vantage points like this? Brianna Pearson has been issued a yellow card. Utah getting set, making sure they're in the right spot, while the Cardinals search for an opening. Got to move back the wall a couple yards, get the 10 yards of clearance from the ball. Off we go. Hard left foot. Score! Off the free kick. The Cardinal take a 3-0 lead. And welcome to the goal scoring column, Sarah Paulson, the freshman with the first goal of her Cardinal career. Calmly placed as it beat the keeper. And Stanford now ahead 3-0. And the Utes have to ratchet it up now. Boy, what a day for the for the Paulson twins. Catherine with the superb assist on the first goal today in the third minute. Now Sarah with her first collegiate points of her career. Williams, Haley, to Breed. Switching field, near side. Falls off of Sarah Paulson's foot, able to get it back. Bounces towards Brooklyn James for the Utes, but played back from Angie to Meyer. Paulson twins from just down the road, practically next door in Los Altos. They do have Stanford tie, as a matter of fact, Catherine attended Tara Vanderveer's basketball camps as a youngster. Stanford women's basketball, of course, in the Pac-12 tournament in Las Vegas. Boy, what a, what a dominating performance that was yesterday against USC. Now they got Oregon State. Who's it off of? Off Utah. Another throw in. Yeah. 
Haley. Catherine Paulson. Centered. Nope. Couldn't get it there in time. As Williams was lurking. Cardinal trying to get off another chance. Breed. Doms. Turns. Had the flag up on the far side. Taken away. Williams too strong. Well, Paul Radcliffe, we told you earlier in the show, super impressed by the freshman Samantha Williams, particularly with her work ethic. Tireless in that department. And we almost saw that directly result in a Cardinal goal. Substitutions for the Cardinal include Catalan Stahl returning along with Madison Eisen. Paige Rubenstein also coming in. Pickett, Breed, and Haley coming off for Stanford. Leaves it for Wheeler. Towards Williams. In the box. Finds some space. Goes to ground. And sends it out of bounds. Well, so many great things from that play from Williams. With the touch, the deft touch to create some space for herself with the defender marking her very closely. And then, hey, go to ground in the box. Why not? You might get the call. As there was a, a little bit of contact between Williams and the Utah defender. Didn't get the whistle, but just terrific collection of little things by Williams in that sequence. Sounds like standard baseball has won. I'm hearing all right now emanating from Sunken Diamond. Brooklyn James. Cut off by Rubenstein. Boy, I thought James had a great shot at that from my vantage point anyway, but Rubenstein from almost out of nowhere able to snuff it out. Kafusi coming back in. And Haley Farrar coming back in as well. Reagan Fuller comes off for the Utes. And guys. Replaced by Hannah Olson. Olson, redshirt sophomore from Sandy, Utah, played club with current and former Utes Haley Skolmoski, Holly DeGerda, Iron Dunn, and current Ute Haley Farrar. So Olson certainly has experience with some Ute players. Paulson, Paulson slides it back post, and it's off target. A good idea from Paulson, especially from that angle. And she kept it on the ground. And maybe someone's crashing in on the back post. No one was there. But Paulson with, with a smart play. Ali Shinko comes on. Courtney Talbot comes off. And Paulson with another impressive sequence. Catherine. Sarah's had hers too. And Paul Radcliffe, in my conversation with him, said, look, we're going to see a lot of growth with this group. And maybe those two, to this point in this match, have, have shown the most growth overall. At least in the first 70 minutes of this one anyway. Stall. Far side, Rubenstein gets it back. Scoring date from Berkeley, Colorado now with a 2-0 lead over Cal. With less than 15 minutes remaining in regulation there.
buffs. Very dangerous over the years. Carter down the sideline towards Bridges. Bridges blocked by Engie. Sent forward towards Catherine Paulson. Cleared, but Angie there to get it back. Looks like Wheeler and Doms weren't quite sure where that one was headed. Rubenstein, a step ahead. And Williams, with some traffic, Stanford calling for the switch, and they finally do to the far side. Outside, centered, Catherine Paulson closing in, but Kennedy Carter able to get it away. Spinning down the far side, Rubenstein. And Stanford to throw it in. Meyer very good with her feet. And that can be key and can make make a bit of a difference at times. Doms has been anticipatory outside. Hiked towards Catherine Paulson, but Edwards able to get there instead. Stahl plays it back to Eisen. Meyer sizing things up. Gets it back. Bridges is close, but not close enough to pressure. Wheeler finds a little room. Boy, both Sarah Paulson and Brett Avery Brady were converging on the ball, and neither of them got there. Brady. And off of the head of Ison, another corner for Utah. This will be number six. Stanford's only had one to this point. Brady to take it. Kafusi tried to put a head on it. It trickles towards the back of the six. But Stanford able to get it out of there. Out of bounds. Utah to throw it in again. 75 minutes plus into this match. 3-0 Stanford. Troy Clarity with you from Laird Q. Kagan Stadium. Pac-12 play. As both of these teams trying to get their first conference win of the year. Cardinal dropping its lone Pac-12 match to this point this season at Eugene in Oregon last week. Utah unable to come up with a conference win at Washington State last week. And because of some of the scheduling quirks, trying to get as many games as possible in this year, both these teams played Pac-12 opponents in two matches last week, but only one of them counted towards the Pac-12 standings as Dom comes off and Sayer returns to the match. 
Stanford's loss to Oregon State, as much as it stings, does not count in the Pac-12 standings. Which in that respect, good news for the Cardinal. Not so good news if you're, if you're Oregon State. Cardinal will get a chance, another chance against the Beavers on March 26th here at Laird Q. Kagan Stadium. And that one will count in the Pac-12 standings. Back to Eisen. Utah trying to pressure. Sayer on the ground. Sarah Paulson to Catherine Paulson. Sayer. Sayer, the hard shot off the crossbar. Watanati with a potential chance, spills off Edwards. Boy, a couple of big saves for Utah. One from the crossbar off the howitzer shot, and then again from Edwards off of Watanabe. Boy, Sayer just uncorked that one. Hard, hard shot. Sayer on the Australian national team, and Showing you a bit of a, a reason why. Sayer, perhaps part of a burgeoning Australia to Stanford pipeline. You remember B.D. Goad, who wrapped up her career winning a national championship in 2019. Goad, the Australian. In fact, Goad told the Stanford coaches about Amy Sayer. Meanwhile, squirting towards the back post. No, beyond Watanabe's reach. And cleared out of bounds by Haley Farrar off of Watanabe. Utah will throw it in. But Beattie Go told the Stanford coaches about Amy Sayer and said, hey, you might want to take a look at this player. Stanford did. And the rest is history. New keeper for Utah is Megan Quiggle. Quiggle, a freshman from Irvine, California, went to modern day high school. So Quiggle comes in for, for Edwards. Out of bounds. Quiggle coming in at keeper for Utah. Chelsea Peterson has also seen playing time this year for the Utes. Williams. Williams slides it through and scores! Williams weaving, whirling, and scoring. And the Cardinal are ahead 4-0. Goals in back-to-back -back games for the freshman from Laguna Beach. And that one, she just caused havoc and somehow fought off two defenders and was able to slide it past Quiggle. And the Cardinal now lead 4-0. The tireless worker, the one who is led by... Her work ethic and the Paul Radcliffe and the Cardinal coaches have already pointed at her to the rest of the team and said, hey, work like this player. Rewarded with her second goal of the year. I believe that was a handball. Yep, mano. That's about all the Spanish I know. And I took three years of it in high school. Then again, that was a long time ago. May have a keeper change coming up for the Cardinal. Michaela Gussler, I believe, is going to come in next opportunity. With Stanford ahead 4-0 and less than 10 minutes to go. Bouncing down the far side. 
And out of bounds. And the keeper change, the torch, being passed from Katie Meyer to Michaela Gussler, a freshman from Westerville, Ohio, was her high school team captain and MVP. And seeing her first action of the 2021 campaign. Welcome to the farm, Michaela. Stanford to throw it in. Utah pressuring. The poke towards the goal. But Gussler able to handle that one quite easily. Well, the Utes have already faced three now ranked opponents this young season. As that one is sent forward, Gussler is able to corral that one. BYU, Washington State, and now Stanford with the Cardinal ranked number 23 in this week's coaches poll, following 20, sports, 20 spots, unfortunately, following the back-to-back the -back losses last week. But things don't get easier for the Utes for the next few weeks with Williams in pursuit. Sent forward by Quiggle. Cardinal have it back. Williams to Catherine Paulson. Paulson, the tough angle into the side of the net. Well, the window closes quickly and Paulson tried to maybe sneak it towards the near post, but instead found the side of the net. Utah now faces 10th ranked Cal on Sunday. Then after that, they'll face USC at Salt Lake City. And then host UCLA, currently the third ranked team in the country. USC not ranked in the polls, which I found somewhat surprising, even though the Trojans did lose to Arizona State last week, but still, it's USC. And Colorado perhaps making a claim to be ranked with its pending potential result over in Berkeley. Bears have closed it to 2-1 as that game in the 87th minute, but Colorado could certainly be in the mix to potentially be in next, week, next week's coach at all. So after this road trip for the Utes is done, Utah with three home games, but boy, they're, they're going to be really tough. Back on the gorgeous campus of the University of Utah in Salt Lake. Grab yourself some breakfast at the Park Cafe. Hit the campus. Spend the day. Ison near side to Sarah Paulson. Catherine Paulson showing for it. Heads in her direction. Cut off by Carter. Sent forward and rejected by the Cardinal defense. So that's the road ahead for Utah. Meanwhile, for the Cardinal, after they face Colorado this week on Sunday, they will head up to the Evergreen State at Seattle, facing the Huskies on March 12th, and then over to the Palouse to face the Washington State Cougars. That is never easy. The Cougs behind Todd Schulenberger. What a, what a program they have become over the past few years. You'll remember the 2019 College Cup featured three teams from the Pac-12, Stanford, UCLA, and Washington State. Escobedo skips off of Ison's head and falls to Williams. Williams, one on four. Tries to switch it up, stall on a dead sprint. McQuiggle handles it, keeps it on the ground. Williams sweeping in, makes the tackle. Utes able to keep it. 
Out of bounds. Utah to throw it in. Williams with a non-stop motor. Stanford's meeting with Cal on March 20th, a non-conference affair. And then the Oregon schools here at Kagan to close out the month of March. Throw in coming up for Stanford. Dispossessed, taken back by Stanford. Stahl tried to win it back. Instead, Utah hangs on to it. Carter, weaving, hanging on to it. And sent forward. And back to Quiggle. Less than three minutes to go. It's rare enough when Stanford loses one game, but losing back-to-back -back matches, that had not happened. Since 2013, the Cardinal closed out the regular season that year with back-to-back -back losses to Washington State and Cal. And they had not lost three in a row since earlier in that 2013 season. It does not appear that Stanford will go to three losses in a row, barring one of the miracles of miracles that we've ever seen in any sport. But the Cardinal, even though it's early in the Pac-12 season, appear to be on their way to getting a much-needed conference win. Cardinal a bit sharper in the passing department, a bit sharper in the movement off the ball department. Not completely 100% clean, but seemingly better than it has been for much of the season for the Cardinal. Sayer sets up Catherine Paulson. The spin heading towards the baseline. The poke. Williams off the crossbar, but the finish for the score. Samantha Williams does it again! And that was superbly set up as Williams, the center point of the celebration for the Cardinal bench. What a goal! Her second of the afternoon. And perhaps we are seeing an emerging force for the Cardinal. In Samantha Williams. And Williams just kept right on going. Ball hit the crossbar beyond the outstretched hand of Quiggle. But Williams just kept right back at it. And able to, to finish it off for one of the niftier goals that we've seen this year. 5-0 Cardinal. Final minute of the match. Take down in the middle, Wheeler. Here come the Utes. Sent forward again, Williams. Out of bounds. It's, it's rapidly reaching a point where anytime the ball even heads in her direction, you need to drop whatever you're doing and watch. 
Cardinal taking their time. As they have the throw in along the far side, but they are in no hurry. And the Cardinal checking off some boxes today, but the most important box they'll check off with this result is a win. Their first in Pac-12 play in the 2021 season. It's a final. The Cardinal beat the Utah Utes 5-0. Impressive for the most part from the Cardinal from start as Stanford got on the board in the third minute, thanks to Savannah Coleman, to finish with Samantha Williams scoring two goals in the final 11 minutes of the match. Williams with the two goals, others scored by Maya Doms in the 31st minute and Sarah Paulson in the 64th minute. Sarah's twin sister Catherine with the terrific assist on the first goal scored by Stanford. Five saves for Katie Meyer in goal for the Cardinal. Michaela Gussler played the final nine and a half minutes. Meanwhile, Utah with no goal scored this afternoon, unable to get in the scoring column. SJ Edwards with a couple of saves. Megan Quiggle came on and played the final 11 and a half minutes in goal for the Utah Utes. Stanford goes up to two and two on the season, one and one in Pac-12 play, while the Utes fall to one, three and two on the year and are now 0-1 and 1 in conference action. Next up for the Utes, they head to Berkeley on Sunday to face the California Golden Bears. Cal ranked 10th in the country, and it appears that match has gone final over in Berkeley with Colorado winning 2-1 at Cal. So Utah at Cal on Sunday afternoon over in Berkeley, a 4 p.m. Mountain Time, 3 p.m. Pacific kickoff. Meanwhile, for the Stanford Cardinal, they will host the Colorado Buffaloes right here at 1 p.m. on Laird Hugh Kagan Stadium. That game on the Pac-12 Network, and I will see you there for that. Looking forward to being on the call. Well, once again, final score here on a Friday afternoon from the farm. Stanford beats Utah 5-0. On behalf of our GoStanford.com and Pac-12 Plus crew, I'll Troy Clarity. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay sane and go Stanford.